So I'm recording. So first, thanks for Georg for running last week's meeting, the, the um, monthly community call. Sorry, I couldn't make it. Um, so thanks for that, Georg. We had a good time. Sorry you missed it. Yeah, you, it sounded like there was a lot of discussion, which is cool. Um, so a couple of things that I had today is um, with respect to ChaosCon, I don't know if anybody has any pressing issues right now. Um, we have our submissions, they're in, and then I think at the end of the week, the planning committee is meeting to talk through those submissions. And for those of you that are on the planning meeting, I don't know if you noticed, but I did make a tab that was just kind of like an approximate schedule across the two rooms. Um, we do have one room is 100 and it's theater style seating. And the other room is 50 and it's workshop style. Um, so we can run things concurrently. Um, we can close one room off, wh whatever it might be. But that's kind of what we have. Um, I don't know if people picked up, but oh no, I haven't sent it out yet. Um, we're actually full. So I got a note from uh, the Linux Foundation because we were going to do an out of band registration site. I don't know if you remember that. That wasn't associated with OSSNA. And Stephanie at the Linux Foundation <laughs> came back and said, yeah, no, <laughs> let's not because we're already full on the Open Source Summit North America. Um, so there are 100 people that have registered. Or I think there were 95 at that point. Wow. Yeah, I know. So naturally, not everybody will come. Um, but still, I thought those were pretty, pretty nice numbers. That's a significant change. But we, can, we can see whether or how, how big the rate is of people who will not show. And then maybe next time, yeah. we'll have a small nominal fee of five dollars, ten dollars, to make sure they really turn too. up if they want to. Because I recall in Vancouver, we had a lot of like unclaimed name badges as well. So maybe we could probably start tracking just what our no-show rates are at these things. So. Yeah, I mean, it's typically, I mean, I don't know what it was like in Vancouver. It's it's typically about 50% is, is the amount of people that show up to, yeah, a lot of the meetups. But, um, I mean, it might have been, it may have been higher in Vancouver last year. Who knows? But Yeah, maybe it'll be lower here because we're on site. Vancouver yeah. was off site. Right. Uh, I think we could safely, I think we could safely book 30% over at least. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a message we're giving people that maybe want to attend that we're unable to? Uh... They're told they're put on the wait list. Okay. So there is a wait list that's being formed. I'm not sure what that looks like or how the LF is managing that list, but that's can what we get told. the can we get the list of names for both the yes. people who are registered and the wait list? Yep, and I'd really okay. like to do that because I have a thought to um, maybe even on the day if we were, and I know this is kind of an events discussion, but if we were going to run a panel, perhaps we could take a look at who's planning on coming and try to assemble a panel of people who are planning on attending. Just a thought. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to be creepy. Like, I see you registered. <laughs> now get to work. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, if we know people that are nice and <laughs> kind yeah. of approachable, it might be something to think about. Um, but yes, I will definitely get that list. And I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to see if Stephanie can't get it to us before we meet on Friday. Okay. That would be great. Um, okay. The other thing I would be interested to, to look at on the list is, does it, does it seem like we have the right people registered already? Like, um, do we have most of the, you know, key maintainers, project committers, the people who are participating in the project? Or do I, we have a whole uh, bunch of random people? I haven't registered for anything yet. <laughs> yeah, so Steph Stephanie did ask me that. She was like, are there people that need to be here that <laughs> aren't registered? Because yep, I think... Yep. Like our speakers, for example, when we actually select them. Yeah, exactly. That they have a spot to sit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, maybe because we haven't talked about maybe overbooking 20% or 30%. We haven't even talked. I haven't even approached that issue with the LF yet. So yeah. we can make sure that those individuals kind of get first 
I'm sure if we give time. Stephanie a list of a list of names of the the gaps that she can get people registered yep. above the hundred. Yep. Yep. So I will. That is no problem there. Um, I would also just like to say uh, that we have two sponsors for ChaosCon. Uh, Red Hat has sponsored at the gold level, so they've given two thousand dollars. Yes, Red Hat. Yay. Thank you, Brian, who is on right now. <laughs> um, and then Baturgia is, a, I think, a silver sponsor at the $1,000 level. So uh, thanks. You can thank Georg directly now. <laughs> Baturgia. <laughs> <laughs> so this is great. So I'll, um, I'm not sure. Am I breaking up? Yep. Did I break up? Yep. Okay. I figured. I, I, every, everybody else froze and I figured it was me. Um, so I'm not sure what $3,000 translates into. So I'll kind of put that on my agenda item too. You know what I mean? Like in terms of coffee and snacks and all that kind of stuff. Cool. All right. Well, I'll follow through on that. I'm, a, I'm assuming you want those displayed on the website. Uh, definitely. So yes, I think that was, that was in the uh, call for support. I think Don uh, put together people and they get mentioned on the website. Okay. Uh, it, should I still include the, uh, the Sloan stuff or should I remove that? Um, you can remove that at this point. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, any other comments on chaos con looks like it's coming together, which is nice. Many people on the call want to last minute donate money. <laughs> that, that'll also work. <laughs> um, all right. So thank you. Um, let's see. Did anybody else on chaos come? Things there. Um, okay. So my, the other thing that I wanted to bring up was the release of metrics. So that's, kind of coming in short order. It's one of those things that I think has been sitting off in the distance for a while. And, you know, lo and behold, here we are. Um, so the, I'm going to send out the newsletter later today. And I think we had put the, I think I picked the 21st, June 21st as kind of the final, like, can you try to, as a working group, have things wrapped up by then so that we can um, put out a call for comment that would basically run for a month and then from there just kind of wrap things up and get it onto the website. Um, I know DNI has, I think, in the neighborhood of five to six metrics that are kind of looking like they're tracking for a release. Um, I know Risk has almost a dozen that appear to be tracking for a release. Um, Andy, do you have comments from value? I'm not sure. I just haven't looked. It's not that I'm metrics that are tracking that way. No, uh, I don't know. Okay, don't know. No problem. Um, well, oh, done. Uh, common. <laughs> you knew you were coming up. <laughs> I did. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we're um, we're thinking probably. I'm gonna guess like three to four metrics, maybe. Okay. Um, we still need to catch up on uh, the geographic metrics, but I think we'll probably have one on organizational affiliation and then a couple responsiveness, time to close and time to first response. Okay, cool. Um, and then evolution, Sean, I don't know where that's at. I'm not sure right now. Here I know we have a good deal of the code coverage metrics and I know that the issues metrics are so that's, I know that we're in good shape on those two. And okay. I missed the last, I missed the last meeting, so. Are you meeting this Wednesday or no? I don't think you, I don't know. I think this is our off week? Yes, this is our off week. I think this is the off week. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay, so if I was to look at that DNI of five, risk about a dozen, 17, 20, I mean, that's a lot evolution even if it was you know it's, it's looking in the neighborhood of two dozen which is great 
Um, I think this is, so then there are a couple of comments on this one. I think this is great for a couple of reasons. One is, um, uh, it, it, I think it gives tooling something to point at, which is really nice, <laughs> is aiming towards, um, towards the versioned metrics, which is really cool. I think that's a big win. Um, and then the other thing is, the other thing that, so I think that's the, the nicest thing for me. And it'll be nice, something nice to get out at Open Source Summit North America and ChaosCon to also point people to. Um, one, another discussion that's kind of showing up in the background right now is how to represent these. Um, you know what I, so like uh, say August 1st, when we say here's version one release, I think the general um, conversation has been on the website, right? And so I think right now that, yeah, thumbs up. And so right now I think the, the conversation is leaning amongst those who are sort of just kind of having it in the background to bring it forward here, um, is to have it on the website, to have a single web page that represents all of the working groups. Right? So it would be whatever, DNI, value, evolution, so on and so forth. And then within each one of those, I have a table that is the released metrics with a link to their detail page. And the detail page would actually also be on the website. So there's no backlinking to the repositories. Does that make sense? Did I get that right, Kevin, okay. Gary? The repositories. Uh, yes. Okay. I'm so sorry, Sean. But we're still using the repositories to sort of metrics and development or yeah a hundred percent I mean that's where all the work would occur and so this just keeps the person who's coming to the website that's trying to look at the version one release they don't end up in the repositories ever that's the idea I would talk about um, and I think Georg had mentioned that you could um, kind of do a marked release inside of the um, yeah Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. the the current uh, The current method that we're looking at is is pulling a uh, specific commit instance. Okay. And GitHub has a feature of marking a specific commit as a release commit, okay. and that way, if you go to the GitHub interface and look at releases, you will automatically go to the commit that the website would be pulling from that way we have a transparent way also in our github workflow of saying this was the release okay so if i'm getting this right if if there are 24 metrics that are released i'll just pick that number kind of if there's 24 metrics that are released there will be 25 new pages on the website there will be a page that lists every metric, and then there will be a page that is the detail for every metric? Correct. Okay. Okay. I like that. I mean, that's, I think that's preferable. Um, does anybody have comments on that? Thoughts? This is where things are kind of tracking right now. I read silences, that's a great idea. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that's how I read silence. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I think, Kevin, do you have a mock-up at this point? I do. It's a uh, very early stage, but I will, uh, I will share it. Okay. So some of well, the things you that we... Would, if you think it would create confusion, maybe don't share it, but uh, I think it's helpful. I, I think this could give the general idea. So there, there are some things that we've discussed here that aren't quite implemented. Okay. Uh, but I, but I think this would give the general idea. Okay. Uh, I just dropped it into the the chat. Uh, the big question I have about this is, if we're releasing these and making them available for comment, how do we want to handle comments? Do we just want text in there that directs them to the email list? Do we want to direct them to a specific chat area? Uh, do we want to direct them to the repo? Uh, do we want to have, do we want to have something built into the website? Yeah, it's a good question. 
So again, there's going to be a one month period where these are released as candidate metrics with a month of open comment from people if they choose to make comments. So any thoughts on how to capture those comments? Is there a way to do it in GitHub directly yeah. or? Yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, I know you want the final version of the metric out on the website. I get that. But wouldn't a draft period or request for comments period qualify as development? Probably. Stage, and therefore, let's just do it in GitHub because that's where it is anyway. You know, or if it's even easier to just create an issue where people can provide input so you don't have to be super technical or familiar with GitHub, but whichever is easier. But. So at least the two that I'm hearing now is move the conversation to the respective area in GitHub. So if somebody has a comment on a value related metric, go over to the value repository and start that conversation there. I do sort of like Ray's idea of just creating an issue as a place for people to okay. provide that feedback because for some people it might be like, do they need to submit a pull request? Sure. Are they going to yeah. submit an issue? And then we could end up with feedback in multiple places. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just also lowers a barrier to entry. It's easier to type on an issue, just create, you know, even if it's just one issue, like here's our release candidate, like, and then people can freeform, like type in their comments or suggestions or okay. questions. I like that as well. However, we could, we could create an issue for each focus area or even for each individual metric. I'm thinking to keep it centralized in one issue so that we have a better chance of aligning across all the release. And so maybe in the metrics repository, we can have one issue. One issue for every, every release metric? Well, I think there's what couple of issues. One would be an issue for every metric, an issue for every focus area, an issue for every working group, or an issue for everybody. So, you know, it's like the, there's one issue to rule them all, which is the, <laughs> well, the metric. <laughs> no, that's, then, that's chaos. No pun intended. And the, I, I kind of like the idea of one, one issue per working group. Same with me. I like one issue per per issue, like seriously, <laughs> one per metric. No, no, like one per metric, because think then if you build if you do find something you want to change and you build a pull request off of it, then you can see it'll be transparent per metric. Okay, so we this comment was made in this issue. We built we yeah, that's a good change. We should make that. Then we do it flip spec out, we put the final final out on the website, and then you have a historic link back to the changes that were made. I agree with Brian. Well, yes. <laughs> Good call. Right, so the, the two things that are on the table right now are one issue per metric. So we would have ultimately, uh, sticking with my 24 metric example, 24 issues distributed across the working groups. So or I was gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in one more, one more plug for what about one per focus area? Because if you look at, for example, um, responsiveness metrics. So we have two. We have time to first response and time to close. Um, it's feasible that some of the comments might apply to both of them. I'm not super picky. I just want to make sure we talk about all the options. I don't. I don't. I'm not necessarily married to any any one, but I could see. I could see pros and cons for all of the options. Here's why I'm pushing back just a teeny tiny bit on this because I'm building. I'm trying to do the draft of the metric today, and I'm old and tired, and I've already confused myself 50 times on. Wait, what are we talking about here with organizational affiliation? I just feel like. There's a chance for cross contamination on metrics if we do it by group. Like somebody will say something and we we're not sure what issue or metric they're talking about. 
that's all. That's really the only reason. Otherwise, yeah, I'd do it by group. But these things get so picky. I'm just wondering if we should make it more granular. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe if we do it at the metric level in the release candidate, we have a third column in our table that says comment on this issue, because otherwise I can see people being confused. Where should we go? Yeah. So yeah. Comment on this metric. Or right. provide feedback. That's a really good idea. Okay. Yeah. And then once the final. In the, yeah. In this time frame you know, provide feedback. And then when we're done, you can just make that column disappear. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. And the, the individual work groups will still handle the individual issues for their, for their metrics yes. release, right? So it will point to their, their repository issue section. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Somebody will like, Somebody suggested we'll just make an issue for each metric. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yep. we'll have the link to it. We can do that. And then Kevin can do them all. <laughs> It'll happen. Worth a shot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Um, any other comments on this process? This is very helpful. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay. Does so? I mean, that that was sort of my two main issues. One was chaos con, kind of telling people the status of that, and then the other was getting feedback on some of these um, metric release issues. Any comments on either of these two still? All right. Um, any of the working groups want to bring anything forward? I can go one by one, or if there's anything pressing on on your mind. The common group is update is easy because all we did was work on those metrics that I mentioned earlier for for the release. The other thing to note is that we are meeting weekly until the yep. uh, release freeze. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, value or risk, we're doing the same thing. Our story is working on the metrics. Okay, <laughs> cool. The uh, diversity and inclusion working group has the same story, working right. on metrics. The guy loved consistency. It's really great. I will say, let me, um, let me make one comment. One of the things that I don't know how all of the working groups are working, but the way that I know a number of them are working is that if there's a, so you have your, obviously your GitHub repository with the table that has the, like the focus area and then the metrics in there. As you're building the page that provides the detail on the metrics, I know a number of the working groups have just been doing that work in Google Docs. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then once that's kind of done, a pull request is based off of that Google Doc. So the detail is actually not being, the detail work is not completely being done in, in GitHub. And that seems to work really well. Uh, yeah, supporting simultaneous collaborative editing does seem to accelerate Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, especially if you're working so for, on for those, yeah, okay. I was just gonna say, especially if you're all working on it together in a meeting. So we've been kind mm -hmm. of using the meetings as as hackathons, and that wouldn't work very well if we were trying to do pull requests. Mm -hmm. Okay. I and mean, so then I think the intention right is then that you get the detail kind of set in stone and then just issue one pull request off that and then you can just do smaller PR or just small, smaller changes if things need to be updated. Okay, cool. Um, any other work group updates? Sounds like that's the story for everybody. Um, tech Technology software, Augur updates. I, Sean, how's that going? That's going good. I mean, right now we're kind of in the, we're just, we're in the throes of having a lot of Google Summer of Code students, and um, I'm kind of a software manager right now. Do you want to talk about 
have did you have have you talked in this call about your consolidated schema? I think I have. I think okay. I, yeah, I mean, there's a. I'm I'm presently updating the readme um, to include reference to that, but we do have in the dev branch a, a single consolidated schema that includes all the. You're a little hard to hear for me, Sean. I don't. It might be me, but uh, am I hard for everyone? No. Yes, it is hard. Okay. Um, it's like your microphone is not picking up that properly. Yeah. Yeah. Or okay. Well, maybe I'll. Use or you're using the wrong audio. microphone. Yeah. It's audio. And um, while you're doing that, any is this any better? Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. Um, yeah, Georg was correct. The uh, wrong microphone was selected. Um. So, all right, if that's better, good. So yeah, we're, we're really just focused on getting it easily deployed. Everything is moving to a consolidated data model. And um, I have some demo versions of that that I'm really working hard on right now. Um, okay, are they demo versions that would be on a website or are they demo yeah. versions? Well, and also just making it like today I, today I committed the full a version of the schema uh, in preparation for describing the readme and describing the installation process in a way that people can just sort of download Augur, specify the GitHub organizations or GitHub the okay. that they want to monitor and run. So that's that's where we're headed. Okay. Explain, I, I explain um, a bit more later or earlier, so I don't want to take up a lot of time before I have more to show. Okay. I want to save it for one. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> Um, Grimoire Lab, I know we have reps here. So Grimoire Lab is working um, on the backend a lot right now, changing how the components in the backend work together and orchestrate each other. Uh, Jesus and I met this morning to discuss the an easy tutorial or having an easy to use Docker image so anyone who wants to try the new release metrics has a like three steps install Docker, open this Docker container, set up your uh, data source that you want to use. So Jesus has worked on that. I'm, I met with uh, Alberto, uh, Daniel and Michael today about um, how we can show in the metric definitions how it is done in uh, Grimoire Lab. So in, especially in evolution, I know we have a section that says um, known implementations and we create a pull request today to see how we can show that the, this metric is already implemented and linking okay. between the metric and the software. So tomorrow during the evolution working group that I we hope to review that pull request with everyone. Okay. Um, well, I don't think I, tomorrow, but I think it's next week. Oh, well then next week. Then we'll have to okay. So the the thing is that we wanted to see and have one um takes this up before we create more pull requests to make sure we have a, the right format. But so I'm is gonna, this about, oops, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna share the, the file that contains it in the chat. So if you go into this file and then to known implementations, you can see that we said, okay, Grimo Lab has mm -hmm. that implemented. There's a dashboard you can install, or you can create your own visualization within existing dashboards. Okay. So yeah, we're looking for feedback on that pull request right now. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, so is, the, is this in the neighborhood? I know there's been talk at Grimoire Lab. I have two questions for the software folks. One is on the development of panels that are representative, and I know this is specific to Grimoire Lab, but the development of panels that are kind of focused on the working groups. I know this has always kind of been a discussion in the, in the background maybe that 
you know, like a panel on evolution or a panel on risk or a panel on value. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. And the panels or dashboards are the place where the metrics become user friendly. Yeah. If I can say so. And there is a collection of metrics um, from Fosdem for the back then growth maturity and decline now evolution working group. Yep. The so so as far as I can tell, no one has really taken up this idea of using the panels. Okay. And so it, it's also difficult right now to take existing panels and start using them in a Grimoire Lab instance. Okay. There's a workflow, but I, I've not heard from anyone who actually is asking for them. Okay. So question and I'm not sure what the time well spent. Yeah, I'm not sure what the utility would be. I don't know. It's a, it's just a think out loud kind of exercise. Yeah. No, we, we're talking about it here at Viturgia and the question is, is it time well spent? Okay. Um, would, um, okay, cool. And then the other thing is for the deployments of the software, whether Augur or Grimoire Lab, um, how are you all handling the data? So if you're giving somebody kind of an out of the box Augur to run, you know, like quick, or you're giving somebody an out of the box to run Grimoire Lab, obviously there's this giant thing of data that kind of needs to go with this to be useful how are you how are you guys handling that we have um our main approach now is to just go after the data from its source and accumulate it in a shared repository that, that the person deploying auger will own okay. we are also going to provide a public copy of gh torrent for other users just because i think the ability to compare your project with any github project remains useful even though there are limitations to what GH current provides. Okay. It's all configurable. If you want to run your own GH current, you're welcome to. Um, we just don't want that to be sure. a way of uh, people playing with the tools that we have. Yeah, because this, this just seems to be one of the harder parts, right? It's one thing to give somebody a piece of software. It's another thing to give somebody terabytes of data. That, yeah. Just, that just seems like a harder, harder thing to do. Um, so, so basically, it's providing access to a public repository? Just for the GHTOR and stuff, so that you can okay. compare with any repository without having to collect and analyze it. Okay. So, and then, oh, go ahead. I, just, I was just going to say with Grimoire Lab, the approach is that um, you pull the data directly from the source. So you set up what community you want to analyze, and then it starts scraping the data. Okay. So it's, it's basically, in, it sounds like in both of these cases, giving people limited sets of data out of the box, except for perhaps access to GH torrent in the case of Augur. Yeah. And then ask, essentially turn on collectors. To, yeah. our, our, okay. um, our vagrant image that people use right now does contain a list of, it's like a hundred repositories that just so that you have more than zero data to play with. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I just wondered about that one. All right, cool. Um, and then I had one other thing, the newsletter. I'll, I'm, again, I'm kind of getting that out on Tuesdays. I'll, I'll continue to work on keeping it short and sweet. Um, I'll ask software folks. I'll continue to ask for software updates every week. If anybody has anything that they want to put out in the newsletter, you know who to call. <laughs> Just give me a ring and I'll get it into the newsletter. Do you have a Grimoire Lab update yet? I do. I, okay. I always reach out to Santi if he's the right person to reach out to. He I can is. reach out to you. Okay. Yeah. Could you add the pull request to see about the, how to represent the metric in the metric uh, definition or app? Uh, well, here's what he's, I mean, I'll put it here in this chat. Yeah, 
he will not have this pull request there because oh. we created it after he sent it to you probably. If you wanna if you wanna add something down in that software part, feel free. Okay. I don't know. I it. Yeah. And just so you all know, just if anybody's curious, I just rotate the headers. So if communities at the top this time, next week they will move down to second, metrics moves down to third, and software moves up to the top. So that's how I'm I write equality in the newsletter. <laughs> so they just rotate. Um, all right. Cool. And by the way, I've gotten quite a bit of, or several, I shouldn't say quite a bit, but several out of a band feedbacks on the newsletter about people appreciating, not necessarily tracking everything that's going on in the community, but getting a kind of a consolidated update as to what's going on. Yeah, I really like it. It's great when I miss the calls. Well. Okay. I will certainly keep it up. It's really easy to put together, <laughs> to, to be honest with you, once the original structure was done. So, and it should, does anybody look at this in their phone? It should render well in a phone. I've tried to be really attentive to that. Okay. We are dropping those on the website as well, yep. the blog, so. Cool, thanks. All right, um, anything else from folks? Very good to see everybody again. And good to see you all. Yes, and so, until next week or the next meeting or whenever it is that I see all you again, <laughs> until well, then. I got a question. Matt and oh, Sean yes. will be in Boston next week, I yeah. see. We are. We're not going to be here. I'll see okay. you there. Oh. oh, yeah, wait. Thanks for the reminder. Yes, Sean and I are going to be in out of town next week. So can somebody run this meeting next week? Please. Not me. I'll be where you are. <laughs> I should be here. Okay, thank you. That's two out of three that I'm, <laughs> I'm absent. That's very unlike me. Um, but, yeah, we just have it. We're booked all day on Tuesday. So... Um, all right, cool. Thanks for the reminder. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks, bye. See you later.